Woodland alongside former affiliate cup champ Adrian Conway. And Bella Martin is down on the competition floor. 11 men advancing from the North America East semifinal to the CrossFit Games. And right now, everyone chasing Benoit Boulanger, who would be the last man in. Both he and Jack Rosema are in this third heat. So we will be keeping an eye on that battle. Rowing and handstand walking, Adrian. And they better do it fast, Sean. We open with a 400-meter row, and it builds in distance each and every round with a lot of premium on that last row. And the varying distances of handstand walk with the middle one being the longest in duration. What are your go ruck steps to success? They're pretty straightforward, but you've got to be reckless on the rower here. This is not simply a timekeeping modality in this event. You've got to sustain an uncomfortable pace. And then you've got to brace and breathe. We're going to see a lot of hands moving fast with legs all over the place, but you've got to be firm and braced in the middle. Ten men on the floor for this third of four heats. We mentioned Benoit Boulanger. He will be right in the middle, and right now that man is a marked man. He currently sits in 11th place overall, the final qualifying spot. And Boulanger has been to the semifinals now three times, and looking to get to the games for the first time in his career. Yeah, he's right here on this cutoff line, Sean, and, and, and I know he trains on a regular basis with Jeff Adler, so having that high level of preparation and competition on a day-in and day-out basis hopefully prepares him for moments just like this. Well, Jack Rosema is just seven points back of that final qualifying spot. Rosema... Another man who's been a fixture at semifinals. Four career appearances, but has yet to make it to the CrossFit Games. We're joined in the booth now by the man who is going to the CrossFit Games with Peak 360. You guys won four of the five events. Noah Olson is here. How you doing, man? I am great. Had a uh, successful two days of competition with the team, which is new for me. It was a, a great time. We did really well. Proud of our squad, and we're excited to clean things up as we get ready for Fort Worth. We were talking yesterday during the broadcast about how valuable this live competition experience is. Oh, man. What did you guys learn? I, that we need to do it a little more. I think we're going to put ourselves in a position to learn from that from now till the games. Let's watch these fellas kick things off. 400-meter row to get us started. Top time still belongs to Jack Farlow, 7 minutes, 40.23 seconds. The Jocko, Go, and Mulk are sending you to the CrossFit Games in Fort Worth. You can enter to win a VIP trip for two to the CrossFit Games, VIP tickets to the Games, airfare, lodging, and a meet and greet with Jocko Willing. You can head to jockofuel.com slash VIP trip to enter. Count me in, signing up. <laughs> hey, man, why not? Noah, you've been in this situation many times as an individual competitor. Is there anyone out here that you look at it in this seat and you're like, okay, that's someone to watch for these for this couple of out here? Man, there's a lot of really, really talented fellas in this heat, and obviously we've got another heat of really good guys coming up. Um, so that's something they have to be aware of too. When you're in an earlier heat, you have to know that even if you take an early lead, you've got to keep hustling because there's a, 10 other guys that are coming for you in the next one. I think in this heat, I would be looking at Benoit. I think he's got the experience of training with Jeff. He's a long guy too. Yeah. I think if you're a great rower, you can be successful here, or if you're a great handstand walker, either one of those is going to give you a little advantage, and obviously uh, being good at both won't hurt. A hand in the air for Boulanger and Rosa on the right side of your screen. Keep an eye on Luke Parker in lane number four as well. Parker is in the mix right now for that 11th and final qualifying spot. He's only 10 points back of Boulanger. Andre Strom is off first ball by Rosema, and then in lane two, Alex Vigno is up on his hands in the whole field now. Onto that first handstand walk. Got to make the turn at the green line and head back. Green to green, then green to yellow. And the final red is your stop sign. That's when you kick down and cross the finish line. Great Strom in lane three. Far left side of your screen in the black shorts, no shirt. Is your leader followed by Jack Rosema. Those transitions are crucial. Yeah, those fast transitions are everything. And we saw that with the women athletes as well. No, it's, it's one of those things where... As the workout continues to build and the more time that you spend on the rower, you've got to be willing to suffer a little bit more. It was like head-to-head. -head. All the heats throughout the course of the day where it was like down to a split second on that round one. And then when we enter the 600, it's like, just like we saw some earlier heats, Jack Barlow, he created a lot of separation in this round of yeah. 600 specifically. You definitely can. I was just thinking contrary to that, which it might be the wrong approach because I haven't tested this one myself, but I think the 400, you come out ripping so that you can stay in that lead path. 600, I would think you settle in a little bit and then sell your soul on that final 800 meter row. Dre Strong, 15th place overall. He has 162 points. He's got to make up 31 on Benoit Boulanger to get into that final qualifying spot. Of course, 
It's a man who has experience at the CrossFit Games on the CrossFit Mayhem team. We were talking to Rory McKernan earlier as well when Rory first moved to Tennessee. Uh, he met Dre and Rory was trying to get the, the lay of the land and he was asking about who does social media, who does the website, who does the merchandise, and Dre was like, well, I do all of it. And he was doing that and still training at a championship level at the same time. Multi-talented. Dre and I are flip-flopping this year. He's going from team to individual, and I'm going from individual to team. I wonder what transition would be harder. Adrian, I know you've done a little bit of both. What do you think would be harder, going individual to team or team to individual? Oh, man, they both come with different challenges, you know? It's... it's it's a mixed bag, yeah. you know what I mean? You you have the opportunity on individual to really be center focused, focused on pacing, just like these gentlemen are here. It's all about them and what they can sustain. But then on a team aspect, and you're experiencing that now, it's like it's not about you. It's about how the other three are managing the stress, the fitness, and everything else, and then we got to tie it all together. And there's a man who's done both as well, Luke Parker. Fifth on a team in 2022, made his individual debut at the games last year, finished 28th overall, just 10 points back of Benoit Boulanger, Jack Rosema, and Alex Vigno. First two done with the 600 meter row. Here comes Dre Strom, and now in lane five, Benoit Boulanger is there. Is anybody going to make up ground on these handstand walks? I'd be curious to see that. It's that far yellow line and back now for the 120 foot trek. Rosema makes the turn. We got a uh -oh. no ref for Boulanger. That's costly. The green shorts in the middle of your screen. He's got to complete that section again. Yeah, Ray we're... Strom and Alex Vigno are staying close to Jack Rosema. And what we noticed earlier was Alexis Raptor's got a complete no rep, had to go back 12 full feet and was able to reclaim her spot essentially because of how she rode. So due to time spent in this particular event, yes, handstand walking matters. The speed is extremely important, but it's this time right here, this 800 meter. You have got to have had the fastest pace in your tank in reserve so that you can sustain it for the longer amount of meters. There is Jack Rosema, the former Ohio State wrestler. <laughs> He's got that look. All academic Big Ten selection. An Ohio State scholar athlete and Big Ten distinguished scholar during his career with the Buckeyes. Right there on the verge. Yeah, and Rosema finished 13th last year. He was close. Watched him compete in the elite division at Wadapalooza this year. This is a guy who it's so easy for me to be like, man, I want Jack to punch his ticket. I want to see him out there on the floor in Fort Worth. He's also spent time as a JAG officer in the Army. That's right. It's cool to see athletes that are successful in other sports transition into our sport because I think they bring a little bit of different expertise that somebody that's just a CrossFitter may not be used to. And Grace Rahm is staying close to Jack Rosema. We check in with their monitors right now on that 800-meter row. Rosema is on the right. Strom is on the left. That's a big difference there. A few seconds per 500 is going to add up during 800 meters of rowing. That's right. And then it does add up, and Rosema already having a lead in regards to meters. At typically coming, he's going to start to approach about a 30-meter separation here real quick away from Andre. That being said, though, if you hustle to the line and kick up a couple seconds before the guy that beat you off the rower, you still could make up that gap. That's right. You bring up a great point, Noah, being a polished athlete like you are on the individual side and now getting experienced on the team side, man. What's the new points of emphasis for you? Transitions in and out, eye contact with your teammates. Like, what are the things that you've learned this year so far? Yeah, all of those things are really important. I think being able to stay in sync with everybody make sure you have a game plan that's been the biggest transition when you have a game plan as an individual if, if one thing goes wrong you can kind of adjust on the fly and figure it out yourself when you're on a team and something goes wrong there's three other components that you have to make sure are on the same page for whatever that adjustment's gonna be but these guys if they they make a quick mistake they can just quickly reset and go hopefully that none of those happen here that's what i'm thinking about on this final handstand walk mm, yep. you want to get up into the handstand position as quickly as possible but if you rush it that's a crucial final handstand walk there that you don't want to make any mistakes on judge's hand in the air for jack rose on the right side of your screen then immediately after that the judge's hand in the air oh, in lane oh, four, second from the left now third from the left luke parker goes into the air followed by gray strong you saw rich Froning looking on earlier These watching his mayhem right. athletes really do well here in the seat Ripping now alex Vino wow. is going to be go. the first man out Followed by Rosema and Parker. I it's just one trip down the floor here. Here it goes. Grace Strom and Benoit Boulanger are out. 
When you're in this position, you're just praying your arms don't give out and you can make it to that finish line. But Jack Farlow's still going to have the top time. Rosemont's catching up. And we'll have to see who got across the finish line first as we go to the chip. Rosemont and Vino were dead even. Strom is in. Panchik. Boulanger. That was a tight finish. Got Marquand Jones still out there finishing up. As and Jones works his way to the finish line, Jack Rosema is going to get the heat win. He edges out Alex Vino by six one hundredths of a second. That little ankle slide wow. there makes a difference. Will Carter's finishing up. Will Carter, another former team athlete yep. in this heat. A little tank walking on his hands. Man. Just a stout individual there working his way through. Was on nice. move fast, looked heavy last year. Gets it done. That was a fun little finish there. Always is. This this event is like a flash in the pan, man, in regards to the finish. It's crazy. My, Jack my Rosema. Right now, third place in the event, as both Jack Farlow and Nate Ackerman still have the top two times. But he looks to gain ground on Benoit Boulanger, and it looks like, depending on what happens here in Heat 4, Jack Rosema could be in a qualifying spot. Here. There's no doubt about it. He looks like he's handling business the way that he came to handle it. He wants to go to Fort Worth and be a part of this first generation that gets to experience the CrossFit Games there. And it was Dre Strom early, but we talked about this with Noah. Hey, what matters more, the handstand walk speed or the rowing speed? And it certainly was a tell of the rower on the final 800 meters where a lot of the athletes were rowing a faster clip than that 144-145 split, and it allowed them to be some of the first to put their hands on that finish mat across the finish line. Mr. Rosma, handling business. Six one hundredths of a second.